Do you think this is the right decision? I imagine maybe your answer possibly might be different to a female rower, maybe. No, not unless a girl wants to compete with me on a wig, with a wig. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's an insane proposition. It should never have been discussed. And I, I want to get my money back for the time wasted talking about this ludicrous topic, which verges on insanity. Um, I have two daughters and I'm delighted that they will not have to compete with the likes of me. I mean, my daughters will be five foot 10 on average. I'm six foot eight. Uh, and it's insane that we ever get, got so far as to even consider girls rowing against men in the name of fairness. So uh, it's a step in the right direction. I think that there's a, there's a wider um, uh, 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 story, though, which is that the IOC is very keen uh, to bring open categories at the Olympic Games in order to reduce the number of rowers uh, competing because we take too much space and we don't bring enough revenue. Uh, Peter, if I can come to you, this is a triumph of common sense, surely? Well, fairness in sport is absolutely paramount. You know, it's absolutely important that there is fairness in sport. But we also have to balance that against fairness towards trans athletes as well. Now, I accept that many trans athletes may have an advantage, and that would be wrong. But I don't think we should generalise about trans athletes because... They come in all shapes and sizes, different weakness, different strength. So, for example, you know, not all trans athletes are six foot five tall and weigh 220 pounds. Now, I know a trans woman footballer who competes in her team. She is the one of the smallest and weakest members of the team. You know, she, there are other biological females who tower over her and are much stronger. So I would prefer individual assessment to assess each individual uh, trans athlete on what potential advantages they have. And if they do have unfair advantages, then of course they should not compete. But equally, we need to say that all, tra all elite athletes tend to have advantages. So some may have bigger hearts and lungs, which gives them an advantage. And these may be biological, biological females with bigger hearts and lungs. They have a clear advantage over other women athletes but no one is proposing for them to be banned. And I just think that the policy is a bit unfair and a bit one-sided. Uh, Alex Story, what do you say to that? Because there has been a, a lot of reporting this morning about this change, putting it in the same bracket, for example, as international swimming, which said that transgender women who had gone through male puberty weren't allowed to compete. That's slightly different to what rowing has said today, uh, because this is just any trans people, no matter if they went through male puberty or not, no matter what their hormone levels are or their, what their height is or their muscle mass, just a, just a complete ban. Is that anti-individualist? Well, the first thing I'd say is that Peter owes me an enormous amount of money. I'm on holiday here and I have to discuss this insane topic, but I'll forgive him this once. The, I think the, the broader topic is, is, is simply this. In order to compete, you need honesty. In sports, without honesty, there, is, there, is, there are no rules, there are no principles. In other words, you cannot build a sport based on deception. This idea that a trans woman is a woman is the beginning of the deconstruction of organized sports. A trans woman is a bloke in a wig pretending to be a woman. And equally, a trans man is not a guy. And we all know this. So the first thing you need to have in any sports is honesty. And the core root of honesty is to see a guy and to see a girl and describe them as they are. It's not a subjective point of view. It's an objective statement of fact. Anybody who believes the opposite of that is selling you insanity and time wasting. Peter, I'm 48. I have an enormous amount of stuff to do. If you keep wasting people's times on this, they might not be as generous as me with forgiveness. Peter Tatchell, if you'd like to respond as a campaigner for trans rights. Well, uh, just take the example of trans men. This ban would equally apply to trans men. Yet according to British Rowing, um, trans men do not have an advantage. In fact, they have a deficit. They are, they are unable to compete on an equal basis because according to British Rowing, they do not have the same advantages as uh, biological males. So I'm just saying that there are some holes in this 
policy. And as I said, I would like to see individual assessment. There's nothing to prevent individual assessment. I accept that in most cases, um, a male person who has gone through puberty as a male will have an advantage in most cases. But we know that people come in all kinds of different biological makeups. You know, some men do not conform to the macho, strong uh, muscle mass, bone density, bone size of other men. And I just think that we shouldn't be lumping all trans people in the same category. They are individuals and there's no reason why we couldn't have individual assessment okay. because that way we would ensure that the sport was fair.